This is part two of the tutorial on Ride the Gear Train, the software that's used to calculate gear trains needed to cut threads on lathes. If you haven't already watched part one, you'll need to choose which one of the part one you want to watch. There are two of them. One is for the South Bend type of lathes, the British and American older lathes, and the other one is for mini lathes, and I could even add a, a further one later, but so far there's just the two, and they are handled separately because they have uh, different features in the gear train. However, the rest of the tutorial is the same for each group, and if you've watched the introduction, you can come on to this section and move on down the line. So this is what you see when you first come to the program, and you've seen this before. We come to the menu where everything uh, originates from and we've already been through choosing the lathe model and the gear selection now we come to step three step three is uh, choosing a calculation type and it says what kind of output would you like and um, starts with imperial options you can choose an imperial thread if you wish uh, and that's the thread with uh, threads per inch and it doesn't matter whether you have an imperial lathe or a metric lathe you can still do either kind of thread the illustration here with the icon shows you the threads per inch symbol. Or you could choose longitudinal feed. Again, the icon shows the lathe moving a long way, so along the length of the lathe, that's a longitudinal feed. You could choose that. This is imperial, so it would be in inches per turn. And the next one is going on the cross slide, so the motor is going to be driving the tool across the lathe on the cross slide, and that would be in inches per turn. And the next one is for diametral pitch. And if you know about gears, you already know about diametral pitch, but there's actually quite a lot of information about that in the help files if you'd, if you'd like to read about it. Then we come to a completely separate section on metric options. Well, it's not completely separate because you can only choose one of these at a time. Um, so you could choose a metric thread with a millimeters pitch or a longitudinal feed rate in millimeters per turn, cross slide feed rate in millimeters turn, or modulus of the gears, which is a metric way primarily of uh, measuring gear teeth. There is one extra here. This is a metric imperial option. And if you choose this option here, you can use it to calculate uh, all the different kinds of gear ratios or pairs of gears, compound gears that can be used to convert from metric to imperial and for other purposes as well. In that case, you just put in the gear ratio you want and it shows you what pairs of gears can be used. So that's just a little added extra. So what we want on here, um, I think we chose an imperial lathe. Let's go and choose a metric thread and hope that we find some answers. Can we cut the metric thread on an imperial lathe without a gearbox? It is a little demanding, but we'll see. Okay, we find ourselves back at the menu system again. And let's go before we do anything else to preferences. And here we can decide what kind of um, display we want. I don't want to see the instruction, the introduction page at the top all the time, so I'm going to turn that off. You can turn off long explanations on the gearboxes and things, and these ones come after the results. You see um, a box full of statistics, another one showing the gears that you used, and gearbox settings. So you can turn each of those off if you want to. We've chosen what kind of um, calculation we want. Next is to specify the error. It says enter the acceptable error. And there's just one number to enter here. And it's somewhat arbitrary. I would suggest when you're first starting, you use a high number for the error like this 2%. And if you get too many results, sometimes you get thousands of results. You might want to cut down to say 0.5 or 0.2. If you find a lot of results that are perfectly accurate with 0% error, you might just want to put zero in here. Again, we can go to the help files if we want to and learn more about what this error is all about. And there's just a little paragraph here about what this error is. Return to the program and return to the menu. We have entered the error, so that was step four. We're now onto step five. Well, in step five, there are three different options and we don't do all of them. We only choose one of those. So we only need to enter one or click one of these options. The first is the simplest one. We just put in the pitch you want. Enter your required pitch in millimeters for your metric thread. So it knows we've requested metric for the pitch, say 1.25 or so. 
millimeters pitch and again there's information in the help file so let's just go straight to the menu and at this stage we can click run ah, just three results with two percent error and the errors on these are 1.57 so if we hadn't chosen two percent we wouldn't have had any results at all but interestingly it does this without having to use any compound gears i told it that we could use one compound gear but it's found these solutions without using any compound gear at all and we can draw this gear chain and see what it looks like as a 16 tooth stud gear driving a 40 tooth lead screw gear as with any idler gear in between fairly simple actually this is the simplest setup that you can have um, and that will give you without a gearbox it'll give you the thread you wanted 1.25 with, with an error a little bit on the large size 1.57 percent but still okay if you're doing a short thread like a nut or you know, five or ten turns on a thread that would be fine underneath this result it's checked to see if the gears fit together properly it did not seem to find any problems of course it's not foolproof and then we return to the menu uh, let's look at some of these uh, more complicated entries 5b allows you put a, to put in a range of values and generate a table with a whole range of different threads so we want to enter the pitch a range of pitches in here so yes we might start with 0 0.5 pitch and go up to say 2.5 pitch and we want to say steps of 0 0.5 so that'll produce a little table of all the uh, possible ways we can put gear trains together for that range of threads so that's sometimes useful if you're wanting to see how many different threads you can cut with your your set of gears let's return to the menu or skip the skip actually running that the third way of entering the pitch is to use reference tables 5c reference tables so now you'll see that it still knows that we're talking about entering a required pitch in millimeters up here but we're going to choose it off the standard tables so the BA system is a peculiar mixture of imperial and metric and it's on here BA zero size actually has a one millimeter pitch and all the others are going down in 90 percent of the previous size this is 90 percent of one this is 90 percent of 0.9 and 90 percent of 0.9 is 0.73 and so on so that's how the BA system works but you're more likely to just choose metric course which is the uh, most common metric thread say you're doing a 10 millimeter thread it has 1.5 millimeters pitch you select that and it shows the pitch and you can only choose one of them but there's a whole range of different metric threads you can choose from including the edison light bulb thread camera threads conduit threads plastic threads trapezoidal threads which are like acme threads telephones tires metric tire threads for the tire valves and then a whole lot of din german standards so we've chosen a um, 1.5 millimeter pitch at this time and we'll go straight to, to run so this time we get six results with two percent error notice this time that we've got three of them that have zero percent errors so we may not need to use these others and if we just want a list of those three we can go back and change the error to zero and we'll just get three items on our list but these other ones actually have very very small errors and they're, they're not too bad either and that's actually because the program has chosen to use this compound gears the 127 slash 100 compound gear for doing metric to imperial conversion or vice versa along with a 24 tooth stud gear and a 40 tooth lead screw gear we'll draw that So here we have the illustration 24 tooth stud gear driving the larger 127 tooth gear compound pair i call that compound one and it's driving compound two which is driving the lead through gear with 40 teeth and there's no gearbox fitted this one again we've got a fit test that seems to think that there could be a problem with compound two meshing with the lead screw gear and the reason this might cause a problem here is if this has a large nut on it or a shaft this gear looks as though it would be hitting the shaft for the lead screw gear so we may want to put a, an idler gear in between here to avoid that from happening so the program goes ahead and shows you where you can put an idler gear in so that's quite useful to be able to visualize exactly what the gear train is going to look like
that's the way you'd probably put it together. It does actually show you different ways you can put um, idler gears in. Remember again, the idler gears don't have any effect on the gear ratio of the gear train, so they can be popped in anywhere you think it may be convenient. They could go in here, or here's one being put in here between the combi gear and lead screw, which I think we'll need to do in this case. So they just put in there to show you different ways that um, the idler gears can be inserted. Let's go back to the initial page we saw before we click draw and you'll see in here so various uh, extra information which is provided. This just explains how the hash symbols work. Down the this column you've got hash symbols and stars. The hash symbols indicate that you've got a zero error here and the two hashes means you've got a small error. So they're reasonable choices so they get a couple of hash symbols. The other part with the two stars means that the program thinks they'll fit together reasonably easily. We happened to choose the first one here and it said they didn't fit very well and we had to put an idler gear in. It might be simpler to use the next one down where it doesn't think you'll need an idler. This one is just that the um, lead screw gear is a little bit bigger and it looks like you may be able to get that on, the way, on there without clashing with the 127 tooth gear. Further, if we scroll further down we'll find, st find statistics which is interesting to look at. Uh, there are only 335 gear train combinations in this case. The lathe setup, in case you've forgotten, we had an imperial lathe uh, cutting a metric thread using one compound gear in the gear train. And automatic mode was not used, and the lead screw has a pitch of eight threads per inch. And some people have wanted to know what the maximum and minimums are that you can get with this setup. You can go up to a 25 millimeter pitch. This shows you the equations, just those who are interested in, the, in that side of it. Now this is a part I wanted to show you specifically because you only get this if you choose 5C and choose a standard thread and then the program is able to get a lot of extra information, not just the pitch but also the thread depth and things like that. So if we scroll down further we find that there are slide settings so that when you're using single point thread cutting and you're using a compound slide set at an angle of 30 degrees, you want to know how far adva to advance that compound slide to make it the correct depth and so this estimates uh, how far you'll need to go in. Depth on the compound side needs to be 0.9374 millimeters or 0 0.0369 inches. Another section here is on drill sizes and that's dependent on the depth of the thread. They don't recommend going down and leaving the tap to cut a hundred percent of the thread depth because it's actually able to form the thread, it mounds up the material up into the peak of the thread and you only need to use a tap that cuts three quarters of the depth of the thread and the rest of it will build up itself. So the usual is recommend to recommend down here a 75% thread depth and for, the, for that you need a drill which is 0.3458 inches or otherwise metric 8.78 inches millimeters and you probably don't have either of those. So these tables are rather unique, I've uh, developed this myself really. I've gone through various sizes you might happen to have in your kit. Now you can look down this list and say, okay, an 8.5 millimeter drill is one I have. It has 97% depth. You could use that, would be okay, particularly in soft material, which is easy to cut. If you're doing something really hard, you may not want to cut that deep. So you may go to a nine millimeter drill, which gives you 61%. And for a hard material, that's not going to be under a great load. That would be fine. Um, the usual recommendation is 75% and to get that you'd need an 8.8 millimeter drill which you may not have. If you're looking at imperial drills I've got a set of drills that are in steps of 64th of an inch and with that set 1130 seconds it gives a depth of 78% of the thread depth so you've got a choice of either using this imperial drill or one of these metric ones. So yeah that table can be quite useful especially if you're tapping your thread. Uh, finally, we have a uh, display which shows you what settings you have on your lathe. This is what the gears that you entered, the so change gears and the compound gears. And return to menu. One thing we haven't talked about is um, using a lathe with a gearbox. It's a, a really exactly the same, but you would have chosen a lathe from this list with a gearbox. So we chose an imperial lathe with no gearbox, but we could go to down and choose my lathe 
which is a boxwood model A which does have a, an imperial gearbox on it. That's a metric one. This is the imperial one here and my gearbox, that's a photograph of my gearbox actually, it's on the, the boxwood model A lathe. So we can choose that and go back to the menu through and run it. Now we've got 115 results with 2% error. To, in order to cut a thread with 1.5 millimeters, the program calculates that you need 16.9333 threads per inch and puts that in the program and comes up with these solutions. Now in this case we're using two compound gears and because two compound gears can produce an enormous number of results, I try not to display them all in one list. Instead, these are the three gears that go on the top line of the equation for calculating the gear train ratio and these three gears go on the bottom line. The top line corresponds to all the driver gears and the bottom line is all the driven gears and I used to ask the user to put together the gear train themselves using these numbers but now you don't have to. You can just choose one that seems to have some appropriate uh, gear sizes or accuracy level that you might want. This one's got 0.099% error so it's the lowest error level and we've now got a gearbox in here so it's telling us what gearbox setting we need to use. Instead of having to figure out ourselves we can click solve and it shows us all the different ways we can put those gears together. So if you look closely, these are all the same results. They're all the same pitch, all the same error, uh, all the same gear train ratio, all the same gearbox settings, and actually all the same gears but put together in different order. So all the different ways you can put those four gears together in different orders and there are 36 different possible combinations. Again, you can choose one which seems to be suitable they all have the same error levels, but you might look at the uh, star levels on here and see which ones are going to go together without clashing, preferably. So you could choose any of those star values and ask the program to draw it for you. And here we have our two compound gears. This is actually two gears here that are very, very close in size. So we have a, a very large stud gear, 56 teeth, driving the smaller of the compound gears and the larger of the compound pair here, the 40 and 60 joined together, the 60 drives the second compound pair. And this driving the smaller of the two, it's a bit difficult to see, but you could actually you can tell that this is driving the smaller of the two and the larger of the, of the two compound gears is driving the lead screw. So the uh, larger is 48 teeth and the smaller is 46 teeth. You can tell this actually if you go back to the previous table and we're using gearbox E7. No obvious problems found, so it doesn't necessarily recommend using an idler gear, but just in case you feel like putting one in, it does show you the different places you can add an idler gear. And uh, we're back to the menu, you can change something. Well, actually we're getting a, a rather large number of results, so I'd be inclined to come back here and change this. Better put in point two, two five. Now when we run the program again, we'll just get a slightly different list. Um, only nine results this time with 0.25% error. Yeah, just as well I didn't choose zero because there aren't any zeros on here. Uh, but there are as these very small error level ones. Statistics are a bit more interesting this time. We've got 392 gear train combinations, but that's combined with 40 gearbox settings. So it's now 15,680 different combinations that went through and found nine results. Uh, productivity of only 0.06%. And this time, you get the list of gears, but you also get the gearbox settings. And you'll see here that this works by assigning values to the letter lever. Another set of values are assigned to the numbered lever. These are multiplied together to get the actual um, F factor for the gearbox, which is really related to the gear ratio. And uh, I usually try to arrange this so it looks the same as the manufacturer's label on the front of the gear gearbox or on the lathe. So 8 threads print uses A1 setting and that's exactly what it looks like on the lathe. And it goes all the way up to 224 threads per inch with standard setting. But these gear settings are used with all sorts of different gear trains so they are not non-standard results. This is uh, pretty typical of what the uh, South Bend gearboxes look like. Uh, if you have this sequence on your gearbox this is a typical South Bend gearbox. MIFID make a slight difference, they uh, eliminate the 11.5 and use a 9.5 instead and that's not a, not a standard South Bend clone. So 
Some people even have both 9.5 and 11.5, and I've seen a few that don't even have either. 11.5 is interesting, that's the thread on an American Imperial hose fitting. So I think we're done. Uh, we've looked at all the different options. Uh, we haven't really looked very closely at optional entries, but we did that in part one. Further down, you can see how many people are using the program. Seems to be building quite fast. Uh, this is uh, a link to YouTube tutorials, which is what we're making right now. And at the bottom, we've got a link to my YouTube channel. So why don't you um, have a shot at my YouTube channel if you're inter interested. This is uh, mainly on projects that are done with the uh, Boxford South Bend type lathe. Uh, but actually a lot of it's relevant to other lathes as well. So you might find some interesting stuff there. Each time you run the program, it shows you a different link to uh, an embedded YouTube video. This one's about using the forge or chuck and dial gauge. So that's my YouTube channel. And uh, if you get a lot of benefit out of this program, it would be nice if you could make a donation through Patreon, maybe a dollar a month for 12 months or something. And there we have it. That's the end of this program.